Okay, so I had a question um, regarding loading in steel cross sections. So I thought I'd do just a quick video on setting those up. Um, so let's just go into structure and let's make a beam system first, just so we can see a whole series of these things. So important thing to note, this denotes the direction the beams are going to travel. You know, so typically if I'm doing my job as a designer, I'm always going to have those the travel distance for the beams be the short direction. I can change that simply by showing beam direction and choosing this or this, right? But usually they're always spanning the short direction. So just be aware of that. A um, couple of things that I have, you know, the right now this is fixed spacing at six feet on center, and it's going to use the default W section, uh, W12 by 26, so just a really common sort of I shape beam with that W section. So when I green checkbox, um, again in plan, it's only going to give me sort of the outline of where it's at. I believe if I switch this to a higher level of detail, it might show me a little bit more. Oh, well, it's not going to show me more because I'm actually looking on it from a different direction. So let's go look at it in 3D. So you can see it's created all of those beams for me. Let's go back to my level one plan. And if I check this, I should be able to see it then as well. Yeah, so I'm going to start seeing those um, as elements in plan um, if I unhide them, right? So the structural uh, system is going to be hidden by default in plan view. So that's a really important thing to know, right? So um, set that back to course so I can see exactly what's happening here. Okay, so let's look at what does happen here in our 3D view. So you can see I built those on level one. So they are spanning across on level one. So the question is, if I want a different profile here than a W12 by 26, right now that's the only piece um, that I can change this to in the default architectural template. So to add something different as a cross section, I would go to insert, load family, and I'm already in the US Imperial Library here. So I'm going to go down to structural framing, steel, and let's just load up a different W section profile. So I'll go to the W wide flange, or yeah, W wide flange, let's do that. I think that's the right one that we want. Yeah, sure. Um, so from here, I'm going to scroll down, let's select a much deeper size so I can tell the difference. Um, so let's do a 24 by something, 24 by 62. Okay, so that's loaded up. That's not replaced anything yet, but now I can select any one of these, go to my drop down list, and I'll see the 24 by 62. So now that beam is much deeper. By the same token, I can also load a truss. Okay, so if I come in and say insert, load family. I can come down to my K-series trusses. They're here someplace. If I knew my alphabet, let's do uh, an angled web. Let's do the rod web. It's cool looking. Let's select one that's about 24 inches deep and a fairly light weight. Let's say OK. So now, same thing, I can select, let's just do a couple of these this time. Let's use the old control click method. So from here, I can scroll down, select my 24K7, and now I've got those as trusses. Now, really important thing to note, it's going to draw those in only as lines, unless I switch my detail to fine, and then it's actually going to give me those center members. So it's not a huge deal in Revit per se, unless I'm exporting this. If I'm going to export this and I need that geometry, I want to make sure that I'm setting my detail level to fine, or if I'm doing an interior rendering um, and I want these trusses to show up correctly, again, I need to make sure that that detail level is set to fine. So pretty simple process. The key thing is from this insert tab. You don't want to load it from any other location like architecture, component, uh, and load, it won't work from there. It needs to come from this insert tab and load a family. Cool? So that's it.